Welcome officially to our first class of our first series of grace. And maybe you're already feeling it because grace is quite a disruptive <laughs> and powerful force because it disrupts everything that has not been operating from the fundamental foundation of grace. So we are opening up a huge treasure chest, but sometimes we're not ready for treasures. I was uh, talking to one of my, um, the people in my master's group, and she has a, a very lovely life. And I, I kind of asked how she got it. And she said, well, my um, father-in-law won the lottery, a, a huge lottery. And she said, it was really hard to get to go through the guilt how can i have this all the i'm not worthy so the treasure chest is there as we move into grace but so much of our keeping small our unworthiness um, our addiction to what's wrong and kind of playing over and over again what's wrong that's going to slap us in the face so grace is a huge gift and it doesn't mean that accepting it at least in these beginning times is going to be easy so mark calls this the operating system for the 12th dimension well your computer is just a bit of hardware and it's the operating system that makes all the difference. So the 12th dimensional operating system will be very different than the one based on linearity and polarity and less grace. So grace causes changes. It's, a, it's an influencer, it's a field. I'm gonna use the word energy, but it's more than just energy it's an underlying field of um, structure and restructuring that is different so it's both the cause of changes and the effect of changes so as we allow grace into our lives and we allow the the disestablishment of what we've been and the reestablishment of something unknown uh, that then causes a huge, beautiful change. So grace causes the change and grace is the result of it, which is this, well, we don't even know, this probably immensity of power and sweetness and light, but we don't know. So this is class one of part one. Part one, Mark has called the path of transcendency. Part two, just so you can look forward, is opening the flows of grace. And part three is grace as a medium of creation. So we're, we're moving on the path, we open the flows, and then we see what can be created from this. We always give a break uh, between these major courses. And I don't know what's been happening for you, but for me, everything's been setting up for this course. It's so different than the last courses. And I'll just share a few of the things um, that have been happening to me so that you can, I don't know, see how it's, it might impact you. And the first thing, and I think it was after our last course, um, I was meditating and generally I pay attention to my chakras. I make sure I'm aligned, connected to the earth, connected to the heavens. And this time the chakra system just blasted open and I was no longer linear. And I saw and felt myself as a flower of life. And I happen to have a little coaster. Thank you, Gregor. This is the flower of life. You've seen it everywhere. There, I put it in the light there. Um, but I felt myself as that and all linearity and polarity just exploded away. Now, obviously I go back to my linearity and polarity because that's where all my, my um, structures are. 
but it was phenomenal. And then, and I shared this with one of the groups, uh, a few weeks ago, I had a healing and, and I talked about it, but now I know what really happened. And I believe this is going to be a huge breakthrough for all of us. But in the, the healing that my friend did, um, at the end of it, he, he opened my chakras and opened up all my vibrations. And of course, as he was going through my chakras, he had my heart chakra be green, which is the color of the heart chakra. And afterwards I says, I need an amethyst. I need amethyst. I need purple. I need to put this on my heart chakra. And what I understood is that where, <laughs> I don't know how to describe this, where my heart chakra in the colors of the rainbow was red before, it's like I had lifted up in my chakras and my heart was now what the purple of my crown chakra. So my throat is now the seventh, the eighth chakra. So my heart is the seventh chakra, the crown. This is the energies that used to be the eighth chakra. My third eye is the energies of the ninth chakra. <laughs> and my crown now is something like the 10th chakra. I don't see them as colors, I see them as white. And now I understand, so let me explain what I have come to understand just in the last few days. The chakra systems are linear and they go, you know, this is our seven chakras that we can see in the rainbow colors, but then there's rainbows that we can see above that and above that and above that, just like different octaves of music. Well, we have, expanded our chakras as much as that octave can hold. And what I see is happening is the chakras stay there and we ascend up. And like Mark always says, things happen in threes in the spiritual worlds. So I didn't just ascend up one where this, the purple went to here and then this became a higher chakra. We went up by three. So what I believe this course is going to help us do is move from this rainbow where we've been up three. So now we're half in the old rainbow and we've got three chakras in this higher octave that we couldn't even see before. So what is that doing for you? Hopefully it's blasting all of us out of the linear into more like this flower of life where we are operating in a structure of oneness that's that was unperceptible, unperceivable before. So you may notice major shifts and don't try to hold on to the old way of being. With these shifts, the other thing I'm seeing is that, I don't even know how to say it. It's like the old earth, the, the new earth is so coming in that you can almost move your hands and feel that the energies are different. So this is how we start our course in the path of transcendency, grace. So welcome to Mark. Um, some of you are new and, and you were called by the topic, Grace. You were called by, this is the time for you. So I would like to warn people again that in these higher levels, seeing things and understanding things are not important. Mark always takes us to spaces of transcendency that can't be comprehended and generally cannot be seen even those of us who are visual cannot be felt as much in our bodies so these classes more and more are a gift of trust to ourselves you are being held in these high frequencies mark mark's energy is pure it's he after 
34 years. He knows how to work with us. He knows how to work with each of you individually. So what someone says at the end wasn't anything like your uh, experience. It doesn't mean you got it wrong. He's filtering down so that you each have your perfect experience, even if it's put you out, even if you're asleep for it. So let's see, anything else I'll say to the new people? Well, just thank you. And for you who've been holding this field for so long, really thank you. Um, I believe we're going to feel the difference in this 12th dimensional state more than we have been ready to before. Welcome, this is Mark. We ask you to have your hands palms open on your laps in the same way you receive a soul body fusion because there is now a downloading of a field of grace that is profoundly transformational. Johnette will be silent. as you open up every cell of your being to receiving a download of the transformational prop properties of grace. Let your body move as it needs to move. At the same time, we'll call it an upload, but it is a download from below your feet, from the core of the material world, not just the core of Mother Earth, but the core of the material world, sending its uploaded messages of grace, its uploaded structures of grace into your body, through your feet. This may be very uncomfortable. And the attempt to stay linear might not be successful. Allow yourself to blast open. 
however it feels for you. Allow, allow, allow. Pay attention to sensations in your body, parts of your brain opening up, tingling, heat. Nausea, density. It actually may feel as if there's conflicts in your body, as if this new operating system is somehow at odds with your old operating system. So that may be a sense of discomfort or strange body sensations. Be present with your body. A download from above, an upload from below. Major unsettledness in your body and your auric field. You might imagine that old programs are being wiped clean, but they don't give up without a fight. They're always in storage. You can go back to your old programs. And now feel your heart. Just putting your awareness there begins to bring a small sense of calmness back. And we're not going for calmness, we're going for transformation.
awareness is slowly returning to you. And now imagine that there's a hidden part of your heart that operates in the world of grace. It's been closed off for so long. But imagine now that you're opening a door or a curtain in your heart And this sense of grace, of upliftment, of light, of gentleness, of love begins to come into your awareness. You might imagine that you're allowing yourself into this magical world where grace has always existed behind the curtain. Trust yourself and move into this magical world in your heart. To feel, to see, to receive. Can you feel your body relax? Some of the tension goes away. Your head gets perhaps a little quieter. As you fall into this space in your heart where grace opens up.
Beautiful. And now imagine that your, your heart, your higher consciousness is grasping grace a little bit more, not with words or understanding, but there's a, a familiarity that is coming back to you with regards to your relationship to grace. It's welcomed, it's familiar. And now we invite you to actually move your body, perhaps stand up as if you are dancing with grace so that your body is alive, moving. So we're going to hold a space for about five minutes for you to move Stand, sway, let your body awaken to grace. This movement's important. You may actually feel pains as this movement, this dance of grace opens a barriers that have been closed.
as you continue to move and dance, you might actually feel like your body is moving through a field of electrons, like the phosphorescence in an ocean if you're swimming at night, that you're moving through this aliveness that you've never noticed before. An aliveness outside yourself. You might imagine that grace is an electrical field inside you and outside you. That you've never resonated to quite to the extent that you can now. Keep moving. One more minute. And remember how this feels and move back into your chairs or not. So we're going to talk a little bit about the nature of grace and the nature of the multidimensional universe. You might imagine that, at least in your eyes, in your worldview, there are two aspects of consciousness. One is the energy that you feel, the energy that creates, that you might call the masculine aspect of consciousness. The other aspect of consciousness you might called the field or the structure through which this energy moves. The structure is the underlying foundation of existence, but it needs energy for creation. So you might imagine that you've been living in these two worlds, this more masculine energy world, this feminine structure underlying wisdom world and what grace is doing is moving you to the world where both of these interconnect in a way unexperienced by you before where the energies of the field and the field itself move together in a harmony and a creative impulse that was impossible before in this separation. 
So grace is bringing a creative impulse that changes everything. So you'll feel it as a, as a knowing, as a flow, but you'll also feel it as the structure of your chakras, as the flower of life structure, as this expansive geometric opening that sometimes you can perceive. Grace has always been there. The difference is now you are changing your receptors so that you can live more abundantly, more expansively in the grace that eluded you before. It brings with it an entirely different worldview, a worldview of oneness and interconnectedness that, yes, you believe in, but there's a difference between believing in something as a thought form and knowing something as a form of consciousness. We directed Johnette to call this company the center for creative consciousness. It is indeed consciousness that creates reality. And with grace, there is a higher opportunity for creation. As you expand to the levels that have been out of your reach before. So we ask you once again to be aware of your body, the energy flows, the structures that seem to be new, shiny, brighter, less words, more being. We invite you now to suspend the who, what, where, why of being, the how of being. Transcend all of that and move now into a space of being grace. your thoughts quiet.
Imagine that in this moment, your spiritual your spirituality is maturing beyond words. Beyond the search for meaning is this place, this field. in this quiet surrender. You can feel or you know grace. Now, pay attention to your body once again. Feeling perhaps once again, the downloading that comes from above of this system of grace, the operating system of grace, and the uploading that comes through your feet of grace, the way we started, but feel that now 
Your body receives it so differently. And before you had to open a curtain in order to feel the happiness of grace and now understand that this time you are so much more used to the space that the curtain's no longer there. So as we imbibe this sense of grace that will be the foundation for this next course, let us talk a little bit about what is different here. You may find that your intentions, which were so important in the other dimensions, seem to take on less energy, less force. Grace has an abundance that is natural to it. And so there's less need for the things that you need to succeed in your 3D world, which is intention, clarity, organization, hard work. If you can imagine that grace being the operating system for these higher dimensions, it's already organized for growth, for love, for expansion, for beingness, for support and being supported. So It's a place that requires trust and clarity of beingness rather than intentions that got you here. So this will take a little bit of opening up to because intentions have been everything. And of course, you're in both worlds. So you have the intentional world that needs to be organized according to the laws of 3D reality. But spend more time in this higher treasured world of grace where it's organized 
It's self-fulfilling for love, abundance, support, laughter, kindness, immortality, um, timelessness. Grace does not have the, the time constraints that you have in your life. I need it and I need it before I die. Grace is beyond that. Grace is a field beyond death. It's really a field of infinity and immortality. So we invite you to have both of these operating systems, the old one for your 3D world, but please spend time in this world that is organized already for everything you could possibly want or need. And we welcome those who are joining now because of the time difference. You will want to listen to this recording. Be with it. So let's talk a little bit about the interface between your 3D linear world and this grace world which is self-organizing for abundance and love and you don't need your intention. The, the interface of these two operating systems can best be described as happiness. So as you cultivate being happy all the time, as you cultivate happiness not as something that happens, something you allow when something good happens, but if you can cultivate happiness as an energy field that you live in, that there's this sparklingness about you, there's this aliveness about you, you're happy that you can open your refrigerator and get something out for lunch, you're happy that it's raining or it's sunny, that happiness becomes instilled, installed in you because happiness is really that interface. Grace comes into happiness. Happiness reaches up to grace. So the seriousness with which you have structured your life has been part of the old operating system and has been successful in the old operating system. And we're kind of in this transition period between the old operating system and the operating system of grace. So we invite you to dance with both and to allow moments, maybe long moments of extraordinary consciousness. So we're going to just hold a space for a few minutes for you to get your head and your the way your thoughts are structured in place to be in a space of extraordinary consciousness without all the intentions so as we hold the space just play with how you're going to find extraordinary consciousness the operating system of grace from your specific vantage point. We'll hold a space and you just play with happiness and grace. Be it in this body. So many of our meditations we escaped out, but this is should be very embodied.
Grace has an ease to it. It has a wholeness in it. It doesn't need to be fought for so much as experienced, welcomed. We can feel many of you are trying too hard. This course has three classes, three courses of eight. You will have so much opportunity to begin to instill grace as the operating system in your life, in your expectations, and then in an expanding field into your world. Grace is a disruptor. It disrupts those stu structures that operated by brute force and power. Grace is a power that doesn't use energy. It's a power of being. And when you think about the angels and the mystics, and you consider they live in this place of being, And so do you. You are not returning to it. You are just taking your eyes off of the screen you've been watching and being with what is so. Welcome for now to grace on this path of transcendency. Thank you. This is Mark. So Mark's telling me not to, to have you leave this space. Don't leave grace. Just do whatever reorganizing you need to do so you have a head again and thoughts again. But let grace be fundamental. Okay. Well, that was quite different because at least me, I, I stayed much more present, which is what he wanted us to do. So, um, and because so many people just joined us, let, let's share a little bit now while it's fresh in your mind for about 10 minutes. Um, any ahas that will help the people who didn't get to have this meditation um, understand it. So, so some little bit of, of experience that will help them understand what was a breakthrough for you, perhaps. So we'll open it up. And Angie, I'm not sure if you have to do something so that they can unmute. I think I already did it. Thank you. 
So uh, Laura, you're first and then we'll have Paul. And Mark, I'll have you take off your video so it's not in the gallery right now. I don't oh. really prefer to say anything. Okay, so you're just here and we welcome you. Thank you. Um, so we'll have you turn off your video and I'll have Paul turn on, um, unmute himself and say what you would like to share. Yeah, I'd like to share. <clears throat> um, this uh, feeling of grace made me uh, very silent. And after we had to dance, and my body wanted to keep moving. Silently, uh, very slow, my breath went very, very slow, deep. Um, my thoughts were very slow and, and just flowing. And I'm still in this energy, and it's it's um it's like a, a elegant movement still moving, and my body still wants to move silently, uh, easy, uh, happy, uh, a wonderful feeling. Yes. You've described it so well. I think that's really helped. It's and, and the way you move, it's like it's like there's this dance that dances you, and that's the currents of grace. I don't know, but you described it beautifully. Thank you. Anyone else, how it feels different in an aha, so you can help someone who missed this feel it. Go ahead, Kari. Yes, when we started the meditation, I felt it start to come down in me. And then we should make it from, from the bottom up, from the feet up. And I felt it strongly, strongly moved something up my legs and built it up. And it just met something in the middle of me from above. And then we should go up and dance on my arms. And I was swaying. I was standing. I had to move a lot. And the, it was perfect. And then I then sat down and we should do it again from bottom and top. And it just mingled, it mixed. And it was absolutely perfect. So if that's the feeling of grace, I got it. <laughs> I've had I had it the whole week where things doesn't matter. I'm floating away. I can do my things in the house and make my days organized. But still, it's a part of me that is floating. I, I never mind things. They are there, but it doesn't concern me. And now, when we were doing this alone, it moved off from my legs and from my top. And when I went into my heart, I started to bubble and laugh. I couldn't stop it. I still laughing in my in me. So that's absolutely wonderful. I feel that's some enormous gorgeous thing. <laughs> I think it is enormous. Thank. Thank you, and and you described it. it it's interesting. So um, I would like to say for me also, it was um, the first time he had this grace just dis descend um, or download descend and then come up. It was hard. There was a and it 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 wasn't a smooth one. But the second time it was different. So Kari, thank you, um, Margaret. I. You're, you're next. Yeah. Hi, good evening. Um, mm -hmm. It's very fun because 
even before meditation start, you just said maybe uh, you said welcome to grace, and maybe the energy is already there. I have felt this energy since I uh, signed up for the course, and uh, this meditation. And I often have it like this when I sign up. Then it starts. Um, and when we started the meditation, uh, I had a lot of ticks inside my body and also outside. Uh, and it was here, there and everywhere, not every place uh, in one time, but very different. And then suddenly it says that uh, now be aware of, uh, I think, come back to your body. Or as a, you, I was in the body, but then it was calming down. And then we were starting all this movement and um, it has been so calm and so wonderful um, and the feeling of happiness without the uh, cause um, yeah. and uh, if I go three months back I have been very challenged I also write to you so uh, I'm really back on my feet uh, and I'm very much connected to myself because I also discovered that I wasn't true to myself so uh, I had to clean up something and uh, now everything is wow. very, very nice. It's so great. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. May you continue to dance with grace. Yes. So, and it's a wonderful feeling, but it's just there. You don't have to do anything. That's what I like the 12th dimension, because you don't have to do anything. It's just there. It so is. thank you yes. to everyone. Actually, thank you, Margaret. And I, I'll just point out that actually the less we do, our awareness opens up. So um, it's hard, but this one, there wasn't anything to do once we allowed it. So one or two other people, an insight that was different perhaps in how you're experiencing grace right now. Yeah, Astrid. Oops, you're muted. Sorry, yeah, hi. Yeah, I am, um, I have, uh, <clears throat> up front I've been, uh, I've been in a flow for the last week or so, and but I've also, especially today, been uh, very angry for no good reason. And uh, when we did this um, uh, pulling down and pulling up, and it became more and more chaotic inside, and I got more and more angry. Uh, and uh, Mark said something about the disgrace with the would uh, wipe out the old programs. Uh, programs, set. yes. Uh, and then he kind of said comforting, but of course they are still stored, so you can pull them back and take them out again. And immediately I spoke out loud in this desperate childish voice, no, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. And then from inside me came this very deep, soft voice saying, I want to move forward. And immediately everything slowed down and I felt this enormous release and the anger was gone, pain was gone, and I kind of moved into something like, yeah, made a decision in that moment. And uh, it feels good. It's yeah. Astrid, okay. thank you for for sharing that. I mean, yeah. that's that's a big change, and just by you um, articulating it so well, then that little voice in us can also handle our issues. So, because I mean, the reason this Mark group is so powerful is because we're a field. So what you just did for you, and you heard it, it, it wiped it out for us as well. So, mm. thank you. Thank you. That's very cool. One more person. Hi. Hi, Greta. Hi, Greta Norway. Uh, I had a, a lot of uh, uh, downloads in the head. It's been the pressure, still the pressure. It's a uh, I had it for several days, so I thought maybe I'm oh, getting headaches or something. But now I know I more understand what it has been. And up for my feet, it was just tingling on 
and especially my hands. They are they are very strong energy in them. So I'm, I might uh, start, start using them. And um, my head, it was at first at the left, very heat. And when he started to, well, at the end, he, it was cold in the right side. And then they just uh, got together, I think, feel so. That's interesting. That's interesting. Wow. I wonder if others feel, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Um, you know, we've been kind of living this particle or, or partitioned this or this, and this grace is just doing the this. Thank you. And I also feel very blissful. Normally I'm very stressed and rushed, but now I'm so calm. It's uh I think it must have started some days ago because at work today, I, well, if I don't do it, I don't do it. <laughs> it's it's not me. It's not who I have been. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. <laughs> so good. Thank you. What I feel, and, and we're going to take a quick break now. Well, you know, usually I, I need the break because we're way, way out there. But this was so embodied. It was so different. Um, so let's just take um, a 10 minute break till 118, 128. So 28 after the hour. And I apologize because of the daylight savings time that many of you missed the beginning, but do go back and watch this recording. All right, see you in 10 minutes. All right, welcome back. That was one of the more grounded meditations we've had in a long time. I'm so much more in, actually more in my body than I normally am, and certainly more in my body than usually after a mark class. So I love the idea that grace is an operating system in this world. You know, I, I think we had to go to these Shambhala and all these places to get our, our soul self, our higher self used to those vibrations. But now there really is a merging of our higher self and our body and hopefully our higher world and our world. I was just rereading what Mark had channeled about this class and, and um, I'm going to read it again. He said, this is a fast track that is absolutely nonlinear. A breakthrough here is like the initial domino falling in the center of a zillion lines of dominoes, creating a cascade of effects throughout the dimensions. You will be guided more than you can imagine in the form of magic, miracles, synchronicities, understandings, and healings. When your brain can't cope anymore is when your heart expands into the spaces of transcendency. Well, he already took us to where our brain couldn't cope anymore. Um, okay, so mm -hmm. I, I do want to just remind people that you are not allowed to share these um, courses. So, you, you know, you can't send somebody else the Zoom link. I know people have had these, have been in Mark groups forever, and that was, those Mark groups were needed before Zoom when we needed to have the energy field of people working together. But now everyone has access to Zoom, people, um, everyone can do this. So the, so we really want those people who have Mark groups that the individuals they can do Zoom themselves. And if people have uh, financial hardships, we do have wonderful donors who've donated um, to our foundation so that we can give scholarships for those of you. So I just wanna say, um, if you've been getting Mark, sharing Mark for free to your friends, um, let's, let's have in this course, Grace, that um, everyone who wants to be part of it goes directly to us and if again if you have financial hardships you can um, ask for a scholarship and i thank you for those of you who have donated to our scholarship funds it helps a lot of people um so it's a the 
first course and I would love to invite questions. Um, big picture questions like what what can we expect with grace in our world uh, say more about you know so so anything so we get a stronger idea of what the purpose of grace is now and what's its impact going to be in us and our world and the reason I ask you all to ask these questions is because I can't be Johnette with her questions and Mark at the same time. So I can never get these answers when it's just me. Okay, so we've got two questioners lined up. Um, let me remove my spotlight here and get, so Len is first and then Falcon's lined up. So let me get, take a sip of my healthy green tea and then I'll call Mark in. Hello everybody. My question is exactly what you said the first thing. What can we expect for this? What impact will it have it on our world? And will we in this time see a significant difference? Thank you. This is Mark. Grace is a disruptor because whatever new operating system is installed, it disrupts all the programs that you had connected to your old operating system, and you've done that many times. So grace is a disruptor. The, the main programs of what Johnette has called the victim redeemer paradigm that you've been living in begins to be disrupted. Someone's microphone is on. Falcon, thank you. Let me get back. <laughs> Grace is a disruptor of the programs that operated in the system of power and control. So your world will continue to see disruptions of all the systems that were built on the old programs that were operating on the old operating system. So that will make this time a little ugly, a little transitional, a little difficult. Mm -hmm. However, on the other side, this new operating system brings more of the energies of happiness, the energies of oneness, the energies where effort is not so important it's more of a knowingness so let us give you an example if you've had a loved one who's passed on you know that the last few weeks or the last few days there is pain and there is anguish and there's sadness and there's sadness in the person who's dying there's sadness in the family there's there's all these energies and in the moment of death, it's as if that person moves into grace mm -hmm. and they, they are there. And in the past operating system, you had to either be enlightened or die to move into grace. What is happening now is the energies that people experience on the other side are actually moving in and can be anchored because your bodies have been practicing holding higher and higher frequencies. We've been working with many of you for decades and, and so have many other teachers in many other systems. So grace is now able to be part of your mortal world in a way that it never was before. You had to leave physicality in order to have it. All of you are anchoring such high frequencies and not just frequencies and energies, but the structure that supports these frequencies and energies, the, the wisdom, the grace operating system. You've been bringing it in, bringing it in, bringing it in. So now, that wonderment that before you had to be on top of a mountain or dead to feel is going to trickle and maybe flood into your lives more and more. And then through 
you all who are the the transmitters you are the early innovators the early adapters of the technology of grace so so you're all on it and lots of other people aren't until the groundswell gets bigger and bigger from you the early adapters of this grace that others will find the field they will go oh my god i've been spending my whole life looking for power and control and safety and now that i'm in my 80s i wasted a lot of time so it's kind of like humanity is is has the opportunity to get the wisdom of an elder or the wisdom that someone gets either before or after they die without having to go through that disruption. So how will you feel it? Moments of happiness, moments where you can back off all your daily survival routines and be in the state of being that you're trying to create. You'll just let it happen. And we invite all of you to start your mornings in grace, to spend 20 minutes in bed where you're warm and cozy and you're kind of between worlds and where before you start thinking, oh, I need to do this, this, and I didn't call the doctor. In that time, be grace. Let those frequencies flood into you. Let those frequencies restructure you so that every day you are more graceful. Yeah. During the meditation in the beginning, when we, you referred to soul body fusion, I, a moment later I thought grace body fusion. Your soul has been your soul's upgraded too, because so many times your souls are just five sizes bigger than your, your body's energy field because you wouldn't allow it to be bigger. But now your energy field, all of you are physicalizing spiritual energy. So you are physicalizing grace. So now your body holds the frequency. Your soul can now get bigger and bigger because it's kind of the middleman between allness and oneness and you but it had to stay at least in tune with you or you would lose your soul altogether so your soul was a subset and now it gets to be a bigger mm -hmm. subset because your physicality can hold more grace okay thank you thank you thank very you. much thank you thank you for the question falcon Grace can only be experienced. It can't really be explained. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> questions, questions. Um, what is the nature of grace? And what is the origin of grace? All right. We'll start with nature. And if we forget origin, you can remind us again. So we'll expand on what we said earlier. The nature of grace is different because it's both the operating system or the cause of a change and the result of a change. The change is that you live gracefully, but grace causes that change. Grace is more than an energy, more than a frequency. It is an organizing principle or structure, we've used that word, married to the frequency or energies. So it's... Hmm, it in many ways can be called the cause of creation. One minute, Johnette wants to write that down.
and as the cause of creation, grace, the anything that's created from the cause of grace is then imbued with grace. It, it holds that operating system of beingness, of flow, of natural abundance. So what was your second question? What is the origin of grace? This is an interesting question. In many ways, the very best answer for you is that grace had no origin. Anything that has an origin is still part of your cause and effect universe, mm -hmm. but there is existence that is original, <laughs> that originated nowhere. And let's just say grace is original. It did not come from anywhere. It was not created by anything. It is an original aspect of existence and then you would ask and non-existence too so yes it is an original aspect of existence and pre-existence that which doesn't exist in a physical world but certainly exists so yes. that's why grace it it doesn't so much descend, it's not coming to you, it's not new for Earth. What's new is your receptors are finally ready to operate in this more advanced system than they have been before. And can we just stay in this? Because this is marvelous. While you're alive in the physical sense, you won't stay in it all of the time. However, you can be aware that you are founded in it, <laughs> that that is your foundation and you will leave the experience of it so you can have chocolate cake, which may or may not be a graceful thing. Um, so you will you won't always be in the experience of grace because you're distracted. But grace as a foundation has never left humanity, has never left Mother Earth, has never left existence. So can you stay in it all the time? Yes. Will you notice it all the time? Probably not. And noticing it isn't necessarily a goal. Um, a goal is to know it and know it is there and then you can notice it or not notice it because it is a fundament it is fundamental and by the end of the course then we might be more able to be it on a continuous basis to yes yes and it won't take to the end of the course um, as always, we put all the frequencies for these first eight classes into today's transmission. So now they, they ju you just got bombarded with them. Now we'll take seven more classes to bring them into uh, a state where they're more accessible to you. So our goal is that you enjoy grace and it is easier to find easier to stay in and equally important easier to see it outside yourself because all of you can stay in a lovely place and soon as soon as you turn on tv or walk outside you don't see it anywhere and so you go back to those old programs so grace becomes a new we're not going to say a new filter. It's an unfiltering <laughs> so that you see that grace never left. Grace is fundamental in all of existence.
Thank you. And when wise ones, priests, high ones give blessings, what they are doing, if they're doing it well, is opening that channel of grace, of getting out of the way and opening that channel of grace. And so we invite you to give blessings to the world, to yourself, to your food, to your dogs, to, to war and people in war, to the leaders. We invite you as an action from this course is to be a blessing giver until you are simply a blessing. Johnette has to write this down too. All right, Margaret, what question? Yeah, I have a short, a short question um, uh, on about the uh, on on what was it? Uh, on feeling, um, uh, will then uh, will it? Um, how will it impact on our neutral? Uh, ability to be neutral, to keep the neutrality. Okay, so how will grace... The, the unfiltering, yes, how will it uh, impact on that? In many ways, neutrality is actually a um, prerequisite for grace because it's nearly impossible to enter grace when there is strong belief systems or strong stuckness. Grace is more of an allowing. It is an opening up. So neutrality allows for that opening up where mm -hmm. strong beliefs or strong programs or what you want to do with the grace. I want grace so that those people stop doing that. That's not going to no. work. <laughs> no, no, no. So, uh, I also right? have it directly the opposite, and that it will help us to be to better to keep the neutrality for for the clear heart and from the pure heart. Yes, yes. So neutrality is is the baseline of grace, and happiness is great is above the baseline of grace. So neutrality is necessary and happiness, bubbliness. Hopefully you felt it in this meditation before the break that there is an aliveness that happiness is. It's not just a choice or an emotion. It's exactly. actual higher frequency. Yeah, but uh, you can, that's, you can feel. So uh, so I, I have a belief that it will help us to keep the neutrality uh, without uh, judging anything from all the impact, uh, inputs we have from the 3D world because it is challenging and for, for, for the time being, that then it's totally crazy. So uh, it, will, it will help you meet that challenge. Yeah, I mean, but... it already does. Already, I don't know how I should have lived in this world without this knowing. So I'm also <laughs> thinking. <laughs> I'm also thinking about the uh, very often in the three D world we put on a role, then we go to job, then we go to a a meeting, or we do this and that. But here in this, what we are doing, we're not putting on a role. We we just is it. That's just what we are. So thank you. Thank you for that wisdom. A roleless place. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Brooke. Thank you. Mark, <laughs> it, it, it seems to me as, as we're moving more and more into grace and we're letting go more of our, our, our crappy thinking and, and we're ascending, letting go all this stuff. What I'm wondering, are we becoming like the oneness? I know I get this from a lot of our spiritual teachings and all this oneness. Will we will we lose our what I see now as my individual identity or my special brook self I, my sense is i'll lose that and i'll be part of the oneness will i have will i have some kind of a unique still experience of me or do i lose that in the oneness that's a great question all right let's see what mark says <sighs> Oh, 
Oh dear, what would the oneness be without the uniqueness of Brooke? What would the oneness be without the uniqueness of everything that is unique? The oneness takes the uniqueness and opens it up to all its brightness because all of you have have hidden your brightness, hidden your yourself under a basket. And the amazing part of oneness is that you are more you than you ever knew you were. And that allows the experience of all the others who are more them than they ever allowed them to be. So oneness is not boring. It is full of uniqueness, but blend, but together in a way that is absolutely honoring and absolutely um, multiplicative. So will Brooke ever be lost? No, because you exist now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Couple more of your brilliant, thoughtful questions so Mark can explain what in the heck he's doing. Because Mark doesn't sit here and tell me these things. I don't actually know it till you ask a question and I hear him say it. Brenda, and then we'll have Lena again, but Brenda. Um. Hi, Mark. Uh, at the very beginning of this session this evening, Jeanette recounted her experience of the chakras and, and the apparent elevation um, or moving up by in three. Can you explain more about that and what it may mean for us? Thank you. First, we want to say, Jeanette is so happy someone asked that question. All right. This movement of your physicality to what we'll call another octave, for want of a different analogy, is monumental in the change of humanity and what you call the movement into the new earth or the new world. It indicates that there is enough of the higher frequencies in your body that you no longer have to be in a physical world or a spiritual world and obviously both have been connected but mostly you have no idea what it's like to actually be connected to the spiritual world and as your body moves up these spectrum of these this rainbow of chakras this rainbow of chakras, this rainbow of chakras, as you physically move up, you hold frequencies of light that have not been able to be held in normal human bodies. Even the masters and the mystics, they weren't supported by the field as you are supported now. So they could have these transcendent energies, but very difficult to hold them long in the disruptive field in which they were doing their mysticism. But in spite of everything you see, the field of human consciousness is supporting this rise, this ascension energy. And those of you who are the way showers will find yourselves physically able to move up these lines of chakras, what that does is make you more multidimensional, less physical, more able to have experiences that people only have after they die, having the knowledge that people only have after they die and bringing it into physicality, bringing it in into the world. And then 
hopefully creating this world operating system to be based on grace rather than greed, grace rather than war. So the changes you all will see in your body will be a hmm, a detoxing of old frequencies of the heavier frequencies. When heavier frequencies detox, it shows up in many ways. It sometimes shows up in loss, loss of a job, loss of a relationship, some kind of loss that has been holding you into the toxic situations. Those losses are never easy. At, after those losses, there's a period of anger, total uncertainty, but a recalibration of, okay, I don't have that relationship or I, I can't run marathons anymore or whatever the loss is. But then you recalibrate and go, oh, but I have more time for this. Oh, and as those toxic causing things move out of your life, again, with great difficulty often, the space it gives, all of you are now filling with a, a spirituality, with a yearning for transcendence, with a grace. That grace begins to detoxify your body more, change more perhaps in the external world, but strengthen the core of you that is that has access to the higher dimensions, to that perpetual peace, that perpetual happiness that before you thought you had to have money for or you had to have the perfect mate for. And you'll realize you didn't need that for anything. You can just have that. So during this time of grace and ascension through to this next octave, and you're the way showers. Most people will never see this, will never notice this. Um, there's a lot of disruption, but there's a clarifying that happens that brings space for grace space for you and space for happiness, love, beingness. We are here as a teacher to support transcendency. And grace is simply the next step on this rung of transcendency. Thank you. Lena and then Donna Gita. Okay. Well, I guess the best we can do is to, not striving, but to open up our hearts, to live in bliss, to live in joy, happiness. That would be, if we could call it, action. Yes. And then I have a question, actually, and it was caused by what you just explained. Does the... Cleansing up of the bodies. Um, now I don't get the word in my head, but you know, negative uh, thought patterns, getting those out of the body. Will that have an impact also on our hormone system of the body? The hormone system is a lot of what you know puts puts a body into function. The biggest changes as you move more into grace is that um, the stress hormones, not necessarily the other hormones, but the stress energies begin to be less pervasive in your body, the adrenaline. Okay. And so that is the biggest change. And as we said earlier, spend some time in the mornings where you, where your, your adrenals aren't jumping into everything you need to do. And try to get your body used to what it's like without the stress hormones because those have usually been the 
instigators of <laughs> most of your action is I have to do this so I'm not stressed. And so those you will notice, we hope, and this, this course is going to take many months, you will notice that the stress begins to dissolve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Donna Gita. Yes, hello. Thank you very much. Can you turn up your volume a little bit? Okay. I wonder, is it better? I don't know, say something. It's not so good now. Is it better? I, not much, but speak loudly and we can, we'll try to hear you. Um, I wonder if the state is similar to what very small children are in, because I seem to remember this when I'm with my grandniece that is one year old, beautiful girl, just adorable. I'm in that state when I'm with her. Is it... That is a very wonderful observation. So when you're with little children, when you're with your dog, when you're in nature, nature and children live in grace. They don't have all those operating systems. Thank heavens, they're not so verbal. Anyone who begins to be verbal then begins to structure everything according to words and, and ideas. But in the pre-verbal or for nature, the non-verbal state, grace is accentuated. Grace is the holiness that is the foundation of those states. So all of you, that's why you're in a supermarket and you love to look at the faces of babies and you smile. Why? You picked up on their grace. So that's a wonderful um, observation that yes, grace is everywhere. It just got shut out by ideas, thinking, and too many words. The beauty of it is that there is no time and there is no agenda. It's just beingness and it's just being in the moment with that what is. That's how I experience it. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Thank you. <laughs> all right. And we'll take Evelyn and then that's all because this is... A, it's, it's a lot of words to channel. So um, I'm so excited for what we're doing, what we're opening up. So Evelyn, what's your question? Uh, I missed the first uh, meditation because I didn't uh, come back till eight o'clock. Uh, but I wonder if we are getting higher and higher and raising our frequencies, uh, sometimes I think we are like walking trees. The, if the crown is getting bigger, we also need to have roots that's coming down into the earth in the same size as the crown. So is it the same with this, that um, when you rise your frequencies, you also need to be more grounded? Ah, that's a beautiful analogy. And let us just say that actually... You cannot rise your free, the, the tree cannot grow its big canopy until it has the roots. So the truth is, as you rise your frequencies like the tree, you have been rooted. Mm. You have been rooted. And when you do this meditation, you'll find that we started by bringing in energy from the top and very quickly, we also brought it up from the bottom and it created quite a lot of turbulence in almost all of you. So you will find that as above, so below, actually going into the earth is no different than the canopy ascending. It's just a different view of the same thing. So thank you. That's an excellent observation for people to understand. You are all grounded enough, or we never could have done this first meditation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm Johnette for the moment, because generally I don't know, I don't think of myself as very easily grounded, but I felt so grounded during that whole meditation. So clearly we have passed some threshold where we 
where this is here rather than all those years where we couldn't bring this here we had to go out to experience it this do you see this is a fundamental shift that that's why everything's going to happen more quickly in our lives in our bodies and in our world um, because now the frequencies can come into our world um, and it's the frequencies of grace it's nothing else those are the only frequencies that are allowed uh, so thank you all again we will put this for this first class out for free um, we put it on our website and we put links on facebook so please so again don't share your zoom link but if there's anybody you know who would benefit from this course or at least benefit from this first class give them the the free link once we post it uh, so thank you all this is extraordinary and it couldn't be extraordinary without you uh, so we'll see you for the next couple of weeks. The Easter Monday, the day after Easter, we will not be meeting. Um, but we'll see you for the next couple. And next week, I believe there still be an hour difference between those of you in Europe. And then um, I think on Easter, you guys go to the same time as we are in the United States. Thank you. Love you all. And um, blessings. <laughs>